The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome to Element 14 Presents. I'm Benjamin Heckendorn, and with us today is Matt Ergel. How's it going there, Matt? What are you working on? Uh, it's going well, Ben. Uh, working on a little bit of a homebrew Geiger counter. It has some radiation sources. Whoa! That sounds pretty cool, but I mean, I thought everything nowadays is safe. Where are you going to find radiation to test it with? Ben, there is radiation everywhere, literally hitting us all the time. Cosmic rays from space giving us background radiation. And there's even uh, depression glass that used uranium to make the green color. Oh, yeah. uh, in your smoke detectors, there's a little americium core in there that helps detect the smoke and the ionization. And then there's even sources that you wouldn't even think of, like food, like bananas and Brazil nuts. They, oh, they absorb radon gas from the ground, and they're all slightly radioactive. So I guess there's no way to avoid radiation. It really isn't. Not in this world. That's why we're going to need you to build that detector. Yes! You know, all this talk about radiation is making me think of one of my favorite video game series, Fallout. Hmm. Funny you should say that, because, uh... There was a turtle by the name of Bert. And the turtle was very alert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He ducked and covered. Ducked and covered. He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. Ducked and covered. Remember what to do, friends. Now tell me right out loud. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash? Duck and cover. Let's get started. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. Amazing hacks. Inspired Designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, so I'm a bit of a Cold War nut, and uh, I love, like, uh, historical technologies and things like that. And uh, I just happened to have these old Soviet surplus Geiger tubes sitting around. So I thought it might be interesting to build uh, my own take on a Geiger counter. Now I was thinking like a, uh, something like the, uh, the CDV 700 series, sort of an updated version of that, you know, with the, with the big handle and the wand and, you know, and doing the thing. So in order to build that, we're gonna need a couple of different components here. Of course, we have our Geiger tube. So the way a Geiger tube works is you have this, uh, you have the sealed vial inside, a sealed glass tube uh, containing an inert gas. And then uh, you take that and you apply a really high potential. For this one, it's about 400 volts. And when your particle, your, your beta, alpha, gamma particle, what have you, uh, comes in and it strikes a nucleus of the gas inside, it temporarily ionizes that gas just enough that you can allow some of that voltage through and we can measure that on this end. We're gonna need uh, some kind of a uh, high voltage source here, which will then feed our tube. And then from the end of the tube, from the cathode of the tube, we're gonna run out and we'll just run it into an Arduino. Uh, essentially, what we need to do is we need to create a high voltage source. So uh, if we're gonna run this thing off of batteries, we'll need some kind of a uh, transformer. To use a transformer, we need a, 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 an AC signal. We need an AC uh, current. Uh, so we're gonna have to create some AC. So the easiest way to do that is create a little oscillator uh, with the 555 timer, and we're gonna run that into our inductor uh, on this side of our transformer. Coming out on this side, 220, still not high enough to do, uh, to do what we need. So we're gonna run this into 
some kind of a diode laddering system. That is then going to drive our GM tube. So then we have our tube. We'll put that in as some kind of a transistor here. Make a transistor. We'll use an NPN transistor. Uh, we're gonna take our five volts running here, take the signal from the Geiger tube, run it into the transistor, uh, run that output to ground, and uh, then we'll be able to take a signal wire off of here. Once this gets pulled to ground, now we've got a little digital signal that we can work with. We can throw that into the Arduino and we've got ourselves a nice little Geiger counter that we can do all kinds of fun things with. So let's take this, let's put it together on the breadboard, make sure it works, and then we'll go from there. Now that I have the circuit assembled, we need to actually test it out. So I've got the Geiger tube, I have the output of the Geiger tube hooked into the scope here. And you'll probably see it peg a little bit every once in a while. Now that's just background radiation, at least it should be. But to really test this thing out, I have this old aircraft instrument. Now this is an ADF uh, from an old World War II, maybe Vietnam era uh, plane. And it has a glow in the dark radium dial. Uh, so we're going to use that, we're just going to point that right over there and boom, now we've got a signal. So now we know this is working and we can take that, we can condition that signal and uh, create a digital pulse that we can measure and count with the Arduino. Okay, so the board is just about ready to go. I've got all the basic uh, uh, parts of the circuit put together. Here is the, the 555, which is generating the AC, going into the transistor, uh, which is going to amplify the AC signal up to, uh, back up to our original five volts, into a transformer, uh, bringing it up to about 1,000, into, or excuse me, up to about 250 volts, which then goes into this, uh, this voltage multiplier takes it up to about a thousand volts, uh, bring it down just a little bit with the series resistors and uh, going out to the Geiger tube, back in uh, signal conditioning into our uh, NPN transistor, which will then create the digital signal for the Arduino, which will go right about here. So let's get some 3D design done and we will be on our way. Okay, so while the base is printing, I should probably get to work on the wand. I want a tube because I have to have a uh, wiring, a wire going down the middle of it. So we're gonna do a tube. That uh, looks all right. And on top of that, we need another tube that is also uh, one inch radius. Uh, so let's go back to hold on, the cylinder there, except I want it as a hole. I'm going to make that two by two inch. I'm going to take that, and I don't want it to go all the way through like that because then you don't have anything for the actual structure. You don't have any structural support. So what I'm going to do is actually offset it about halfway. I'll just copy that and paste it. Okay, uh, it looks decent. going to be two pieces. And they'll go together. This one will fit right on top of this one, and we'll have ourselves a nice little uh, wand probe. Now that the physical build is nearly complete, it's time to look at some code. Now I'm using the Arduino instead of a completely analog circuit just because it's a little bit easier to drive multiple things off of the, uh, off of the Arduino because we have a click, because we have a LED, and because we have a meter that we have to drive. Uh, doing that all off the Arduino is a lot easier to do in code than it is to set up several separate circuits for that. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna work with it that way. So I've written up some uh, some basic code here. Essentially, what we've done was we've just uh, we've just declared a bunch of pins, uh, LED. We have a pin that's going to be declared as an interrupt. So that's our that's our interrupt pin input there. Everything else is an output. 
And then we're going to attach the interrupt to pin two. That's gonna be the pin that is attached to the 2N2222 transistor. So when we have a, an event that is pulled low and we can detect that, so that's our interrupt. And when, uh, when we get an interrupt, we're going to run the function blink, which is down here. And uh, of course we're doing that only when it pulls low. So quick look at blink. Uh, we're going to write the LED high. Uh, we're going to write our speaker high. So what I've done with the speaker is I've done a little bit of hackery there. And uh, instead of having the speaker from pin to speaker to ground, is I've taken the ground from that speaker and run it into another digital output pin. It's gonna double the amplitude of the wave going to the speaker of the signal to give us more volume. This digital right 12, this is actually our meter. So what we're doing is we're just sending a quick pulse to the meter. I've set the meter for five volts, but it is kind of slow. So what it does is it kicks it up just a little bit. And what it's gonna do is mechanically push the needle up. The more events we have in sequence, in short sequence, the more it's gonna kick it up. So that's what we're doing here is we're gonna, we're gonna write that high. And then of course, back into our loop, everything else is gonna go low except for the opposite speaker pin. So we got a nice little pulse generator. We'll go ahead and upload that into the Arduino, put everything together, and we're gonna be on our way. So these actually came out really nicely. This is gonna be the handle and the actual head of the wand. They're going to put together like that. There's gonna be a cord running up from, uh, from up here and uh, a Geiger tube's gonna sit behind these veins here. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is just clean this up and uh, put these two together. I need to assemble the interior of the wand and uh, this will be ready. Okay, so I have everything kind of wired up correctly and installed in the box. Now, all I really have to do is just uh, put everything in place, seal up the box, and, uh, and it will be finished. Uh, I've also added, uh, because I couldn't figure out, I couldn't decide really what kind of a power situation I wanted to, and then I remembered that I had a, uh, I conveniently had an extra LiPo uh, sitting around not only did I have a LiPo, but I had an extra Adafruit uh, power boost sitting around. So I decided let's make this thing a rechargeable. So uh, we're gonna put the LiPo in here. I've got the power boost wired up already. I just need to cut a hole for the USB ports for, for charging. And we'll put that inside. We'll get everything mounted and this thing will be ready to go. So here it is, my homebrew Geiger counter survey meter. And uh, it turned out very nicely. It's got kind of a nice, uh, nice retro feel to it, very civil defense oriented. Uh, it's got the nice external wand with the heavy duty jack here and our little meter uh, that shows us uh, millirads per hour times 10. Uh, that's just a little easier to, to show than thousands of millirad hours. Uh, anyway, so let's give her a shot here, turn her on, and I have my uh, radium dial here. As you can see, that needle's dancing around, giving us about, uh, giving us about 0.3 millirad hours, or millirads per hour. I did calibrate this against a known value on, a, uh, on an actual real Geiger counter, uh, so it's pretty close, but as they say in radiation, if it's close enough, probably close enough. Have you ever worked with vintage test equipment? Or have you ever messed around with Geiger counters and other radiation sensing equipment? Let us know in the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash community. And until next time, surf's up, dude.